The 24th Winter Olympics will open in Beijing on February the 4th. For these competitions, the Olympic motto is faster, higher, stronger, together. And this not only applies to the athletes, but also everyone else involved in the games, including broadcasters. On Wednesday, the China Media Group hosted the first Global Media Innovation Forum. It encourages innovative broadcast coverage of the upcoming Olympics. Chinese President Xi Jinping sent a congratulatory letter to the CMG Forum, saying China will deliver a streamlined, safe, and splendid Winter Olympics for the world. Noting the forum's theme, Together for a High-Tech Winter Olympics, she expressed the hope that participants at the forum could work together through discussions and eventually showcase the charm of ice and snow sports, which would appeal to broader audiences. China Media Group chief Shen Haixiong hopes that the forum will inject new dynamics into the innovative development of the global media industry and contribute to the success of Beijing 2022. We will firmly remain a practitioner and communicator of media innovation, work together with global media partners, and cooperate well with International Olympics Committee to present a splendid and great game. I would like to say thank you to CMG and to all our media and broadcast partners. Thank you for joining us in writing this exciting new chapter in sporting history. It is believed that China Media Group can present the striving course of athletes from all over the world and further explain the concepts of environmental responsibility, sharing, openness, and cleanliness. Mainstream media leaders from 78 countries that participated in the forum say technological innovations will bring the Winter Olympics to the world despite the COVID pandemic. The Olympic Express, hosted by CGTN, one of the three sub-forums of the CMG Forum, brings you a high-speed journey aboard the special 5G Express bullet train between Beijing and Zhang Jiakou. and welcome to a journey on the Olympic Express, CMG's forum on the 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. I'm at the Beijing North Railway Station, ready to board the Olympic Express, the 5G high-speed train connecting three competition zones of the Winter Games. The destination is Chongli. It's going to be a unique experience, and here is why. A high-speed railway interlinking the 2022 Winter Olympics three competition zones, Beijing, Yanqing, and Zhangjiakou. In only 56 minutes, the Beijing to Zhangjiakou high-speed railway completes a journey of 174 kilometers, outrunning its international peers in cities like New York and London. Yet a century ago, the country was just starting to have its first domestically made railway thanks to an engineer by the name of Zhen Tianyou. In 1909, the Jingjiang Railway started operation. A century later on the same route, trains have gone from traveling at 35 kilometers an hour to 350 kilometers an hour. Dubbed the world's first smart high-speed rail, the Beijing to Zhangjiakou high-speed railway is fully covered in 5G network, equipped with automated driving system and uses China's self-developed Beidou navigation satellite system. Taking ski trips by train is becoming in vogue, driving local economies along the way. For more than 100 years, trains have been running between Beijing and Zhangjiakou the very bedrock of modern China, taking its people to places in ever faster speed. Hey, hello, Kelly. Hi. 
Thank you so much. Yes, of course. Thank you. Ah, hello. Hello, good to see you. Good to see you. So I'm looking forward to talking to you. Right? Okay. Yeah. And here is Alexander. Long time no see, my friend. Nice to meet you. Nice to see also you again. Know. Very good, very good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hello, I'm Tian Wei, and welcome to our special forum on the Olympic Express. Joining me today, Ms. Perchenko Elena. She is a TV host from China Arab TV. Good to see you. And also Alexander Bolitsky, who is a senior broadcaster journalist from Russia State Television and Radio. Good to see you, Alexander. Thank you for invitation. It's my honor. And uh, Javier Garcia, who is a former China director at the agency EFE. Good to see you, sir. Nice to see you again, shall I say it that Thank way. Thank you. So what are you expecting on this very special trip? Well, of course, speed. Oh, yes. I think we smooth also. Smooth. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. What's the key word for you? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, smooth and speed, and maybe we can try with uh, coins. Yes, I even brought. bring some mm -hmm. coins, so when the train is started to move, we we'll can put the coins on the table we and can we will test. practice. We will test. That will be a good experiment. That, uh, high speed trains and high speed railway is uh, one of the symbols of China, of its development. It, it's uh, speedy. <laughs> infrastructure yeah. right actually all of you had some earlier experience with express trains in china right yes but think i think that this is uh, train is quite special because first of all it's going to be with 5g plus 4k and uh, this olympic express you know is like express to the fairy tale that we are <laughs> going to jandako uh -huh. it's going to be in winter games so uh we also can see the color of winter it's blue one right so i'm sitting here really i can feel the spirit right of Olympic Games. It's from Beijing to Zhang Jiakou, so you can tell it's uh, Beijing is focusing more on the ice sports, while Zhang Jiakou is uh, mainly focused on the snow sports. So it's coming from one sport to another. Every, every year in Europe, I usually go for skiing. Oh, we're moving. Yeah. Yes, we are. Um, yeah, I love skiing. So uh, last year, I also visited Zhang Jiakou at Chongli, and I love the skiing resort. Yeah. So before in Europe, every time with my family, it right. was like, um, lifestyle, you know, on weekends, on holidays, yeah. usually we, we just go for skiing and we enjoy skiing, we enjoy good food, good restaurants. And now you can do that in China, yes, of course, in same. Beijing. That's, and a, that's my point, that's how I want to say. All right, yes. and we are moving. The train is heading out from uh, Beijing North Railway Station to Zhang Jiakou. You know, it's from the ice sports to the snow sports. Along the way, we are not only joined by our colleagues here, but also my colleagues are back in the CGTN studio with their guest over there. Here's my colleague Wang Guan. Go ahead, Wang Guan. Hello. Hi there, Tian Wei. You all look very sharp on the Olympic Express, and it is indeed a breakthrough. Joining me today are Eladio Korna, Chief Information Officer of the International Olympic Committee. Mr. Korna is currently in Beijing and he has been invited to attend the Winter Olympics. Also in Beijing, we're joined by Fan Wei Cheng, professor at Tsinghua University and academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering. He is the leading scientist in charge of the high-tech programs for the 2022 Winter Games. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Dong Jun, our sports commentator and also co-founder of EI Asia Limited. Tianwei, we're all very excited to join you on this journey. Back to you. Thank you very much. I'm going to come back to you a bit later. Now we are moving, so you can check about uh, speed, mm -hmm. stability, and fun, as you three mentioned. Can we do the experiment yes, now? Yes, sure. Got some we got some coins, coins here. Yes. OK. okay Showing so coins. Let's try yeah. it. Coins, let's do coins. that. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's test it. Let's test it. Whoa. Yes, indeed. And that is why I earlier talked to the conductor of the train, Mr. Mm -hmm. Wang Haitao. He told me a lot of inside stories about the train. Let's listen in.
So how is it like to drive this train? 呃，速度比较高，所以需要我们运行中精神高度集中，对每一个信号、每一个指令立刻需要做出反应，嗯，才能保证列车的平稳舒适。因为京张高铁的坡度比较大，然后最大坡度达到了千分之三十。我们经过两年多的一系列摸索和钻研，形成了一套固化操作。嗯、呃，针对高坡区段，可以适当的加速或者减速，确保列车的平稳。那到底是加速还是减速？怎么来决定？这个根据坡度和线路的曲线和当时线路的速度决定。So that is really the key. 经验是最关键的，是吧？ Uh, how to? This this experience is from where? How to practice? Ah, this is just by repeated exercise and summation. You are the most popular route. Which part of Beijing do you like the most? I like the Guanxi Sea Shore Canal. 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 期待了。That was the conductor of the Olympic Express, Mr. Wang Haitao. So let's have some fun now. After all the information, we need to test whether those information are well instilled in the heads of these wonderful correspondents. So now let's have this quiz we have prepared for you with all the earlier information. Three questions. We have the prize, a big prize for a final winner. Are we ready for this? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Three questions. First question: How fast the train can be? How many kilometers an hour? Are we ready? Yeah. Let's show. <laughs> Three hundred fifty. Three hundred fifty. Ah, so that is the range. Ah, so from 150 to 360. Yeah. Wow. I think uh, maybe we... He's already we optimistic. <laughs> a little optimistic. <laughs> 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 maybe, yeah. Uh, so I think we, the three of you are all correct in your answers, uh, even though he's more optimistic than us. Uh, <coughs> the second but question... correct. <laughs> <laughs> the second question. How many stops from Beijing North Railway Station <coughs> to Zhang Jiakou, Chongli? <laughs> we got diverse uh, answers. Yeah. How many? S seven. Seven. But seven. I think that during the Olympic Games, it would be no stops at all. Fast. No stop. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I think so. Well, but we got who some answers. <laughs> what about for you? Eleven. I don't know where it's come from, but eleven. Maybe it's a. It's a beautiful number. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful number. That's why. Double, double eleven. <laughs> double he said there's no one. stop, and you said there will be eleven. <laughs> and what about for you, Javier? Seven. Yeah. Uh, I think also that during the Winter Olympics it will be no stop or one stop for Gantzi, no? For ah. the other station. Okay. Olympic. Uh, I think it's 11. Yes. Yay! Yay! Really? And the final one, final question. Mm. There are two mascots of the Olympic Games and the also the Paralympic Winter Games. What are na their names? Okay. Did we get the answer already? Show it. What is it called? Bing Bing Duan Duan and Xue Rong Rong. Xue Rong Rong. Wow, good. And what about for you? Same. Bing Duan Duan, Xue Rong Rong. Javier. Bing Duan Duan, Xue Rong Rong. I think we should applaud for ourselves. <laughs> it's very good. Even though it's spelled differently, for the different versions, but I think you all did a great job. And we have exactly the two mascots with us. One, of course, is the Bing Duan Duan for the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. And also the Xue Rong Rong for the Paralympic Games. It's like snow, and this is like ice, right? Exactly, exactly. Like so cute. Like an astronaut. Uh, like an astronaut, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the red heart is the, uh, for example, like uh, from China, from Beijing, with love. Oh, <laughs> with, <laughs> with love, yeah. yes, indeed. And also it's a big lantern. Mm -hmm. 
the f little figurine was uh, actually made from the inspiration of a big lantern. Yeah. And the Chinese the giant new, uh, Lunar New Year will be uh, will at be the just same around the corner. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So that's it. I think you got all the answers right. We have one prize for every one of you, <laughs> which we will give you to you later. It's a CGTN souvenir. Thank you. Great. Putting fun aside, so what are your reporting plans for the game, Alexander? Uh, I th I'm sure that it will be a really great experience for me because I never worked during the Olympic Games before. And uh, during the Beijing Olympics, we are planning to leave and to work in the closed loop so it would be one more <laughs> experience uh, uh, to test all the system, uh, how the system is working during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's also a very important thing because you know that uh, China right now maybe is the only country who is ready to invite so many people abroad mm -hmm. right now. So that's why it's also very interesting. Uh, it would be rather lots of uh, TV crews from our channel because uh, you know that uh, winter sports uh, they, it's very popular in Russia so that, uh, that's why we are ready to work more than 24 hours per, per day <laughs> maybe 36 <laughs> <laughs> during all the Olympics and all the Paralympics so I say you are very optimistic in that regard 36 yeah. hours in that, a day it's possible <laughs> here is possible everything is possible okay <laughs> what about for you well we not go into the loop but we're still uh, planning to cover the Winter Olympic Games. And before, we all already uh, did a lot of um, news. And uh, we were in s such many uh, national sports centers, uh, like um, Big Air, uh, Shogang, and uh, um, uh, National um, Fast uh, Skating Oval, um, and national um, uh, sports centers. Mm -hmm. So. As for me, uh, mostly I like um, Big Air Shogun because the idea how uh, Big Air built before it was steel mill and after in um, 2018 it's rebuilt to Big Air, rebuilt to sports center. So for me, this idea how you can uh, progress, how, you, uh, how the technologies um, give you a big convenience mm -hmm. and uh, bring you a lot of prawns um, in this uh, life. So and as you may know, it was a former factory. Yes, former factory, mm -hmm. yes. And now That's it turned into an Olympic park. Yes, it's how sports can change our life. And before, maybe because of some yeah. consider of uh, air pollution, so they rebuild it to the sport and sport can bring a uh, healthy li lifestyle. So it's also about uh, green life, about um, natural and about uh, uh, healthy. Mm. Javier, I know you've been covering China for years and now even you uh, do not work as a correspondent but as a seasoned media person, your eyes on the Beijing Winter Games. So I think it's a challenge, no? It's a good opportunity for China after the Summer Olympic Games in 2008 in Beijing. And Beijing will be the first city to host the two Olympic uh, Games, winter and summer. And let's see, it's hard because uh, China has to organize that in the middle of a pandemic, which is not so easy. And there are, uh, yeah, a tough situations for journalists or athletes like to be in a closed loop, in a bubble for, for weeks. But uh, this is necessary to, to have a, a healthy and controlled gains, no? And then I think, uh, it could be uh, China has already uh, proved in by the Beijing uh, Summer Games in 2008 that uh, it can it can organize very well uh, an Olympic uh, ceremony and an Olympic Games, Olympic competition, and I think it's it's a good challenge and could be very nice uh, for the country and also for the world mm. to be together here in the middle of this pandemic and so and sport and compete and be together all the countries of the world. Mm. There were a lot of controversies uh, about this or that uh, about the Olympic Games, particularly during the year of the COVID. So uh, many are wondering whether those things will go away once the athletes begin to show their talents, either on ice or on the snow. What do you think? Uh, so Olympic Games uh, first is the first one. Uh, sports sports is the first one uh, that's why we have to 
concentrate our mm. experience and our opinion on sports. Mm. Uh, but uh, but nevertheless, uh, for China, such kind of uh, event is a great opportunity to show all over the world uh, its uh, high technology development. Mm -hmm. By the way, maybe that's why some uh, Western politicians they declared a boycott for Beijing because they are afraid of China's success. Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> As for me, um, Olympic Games. Uh it's also about sport, but more it's uh, about friendship. Like all uh, people from different car uh, countries, the sportsmen, some delegations, politicians, they came to one area to, s to celebrate sports, to have fun together. So I really what I'm waiting from Winter Olympic Games that we enjoy, we, we enjoy our friendship. Mm -hmm. Like, um, this sentence together for the future right so I really do believe in peace <laughs> mm. in peace and this uh, sports so uh, we can enjoy uh, together and make our friendship more and more stable mm. I think the, the Olympic Games are a good opportunity to build bridges and not to build walls uh, we live in a world where a lot of people like to build walls and I think we need to build bridges to understand each other in any country and understand different cultures and different civilizations in the world and cooperate and try to do something good together and, and not try to fight and the Olympic Games could be a very good opportunity for that. Well said Javier. Beijing has been pulling all the stops to prepare for the Games, as you know, to aid the media coverage and help athletes from around the world. There are many that are working on these trains that are helping all of us to do our job. I earlier talked to some of the train attendants. Let's hear what they have to say. Now she gives me the opportunity to do the announcement arriving at Chongli Station. I'm kind of nervous, but anyway, let me try. How? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are arriving at Chongli Station. Please take your belongings with you when you get off from the train. It's a really an honor. Thank you for giving me It was great fun for me to learn from you girls, uh, you know, turning the seeds, right, and do the broadcasting. It was really fun, but I'm sure you have a lot to learn and a lot to work on during your journey. 对所以说疫情防控是我们现在的关键的重大一项其次呢我们要保证我们冬奥运输期间的安全在这个时候呢因为我们的城里天气比较寒冷所以呢我们举行了冬季运输的三十一个的应急突发处置的演练过程我所以
I heard the, you know, the recuperation centers for athletes are very exciting. The technology to chill, the ice are, are you know, state of the art, and also the, um, you know, uh, the COVID prevention robots over there. Um, what are some of the breakthroughs that you think Beijing has to offer that previous games perhaps uh, have not been able to achieve? Uh, actually, there, there are uh, several aspects. Uh, firstly, the planning, design, construction, operation, and the maintenance of the venues, for, for example, scientific and the technical innovation strongly supports the renewal and the reconstruction of existing venues, such as the intelligent birth nets and the ice and the water conversion of the water cube. It has successfully retained the heritage of the two Olympic Games and effectively solve the long-term operation programs of large venues. Another example is that the design of the National Skiing Jumping Center is inspired by the Chinese traditional, traditional mascot Ru Yi. Where I can, I can show you the picture. Uh, this is a, a traditional Chinese mascot Ru Yi. Then uh, this is a jump, uh, jump, jumping cent, uh, ski jumping center. That's in Jiangjiapo, so now, right? In Jiangbei, right? Uh, yeah. So now we call the Snow Ru Yi. Um, and also, uh, the, the, there are some uh, other as, uh, aspects, uh, such as uh, achieve the resolution of the meteorological forecast at the level of 100 meters in space and the minutes in time as right. the special venues. Yeah, let's talk about some other aspects of the high tech Olympics. Uh, let's turn to Mr. Korna, Chief Information Officer of the International Olympic Committee. Uh, Mr. Korna, great to have you with us. We know that in Rio 2016, cloud broadcasting uh, came up as a great you know, uh, concept. And at the Tokyo 2020 Games, uh, you know, because of COVID and travel restrictions, um, not a whole lot of fans were allowed inside the stadium. So OBS partnered with the Alibaba Cloud and brought us this uh, OBS Cloud. And for the upcoming Beijing Games, it is uh, you know, set to be you know, a game of Cloud Olympics. Um, can you tell us some specifics? I mean, how exactly are we going to see a Cloud Olympics? Thank you very much for having me here, and thank you for inviting me. You are absolutely correct. Uh, digitization has been a key trend for other the Olympic Games. Everything touching games on, is being transformed from uh, technology, how our fans interact with us, to how we perform sports and how we actually uh, produce the sports in the sports venue. And it's going through a major transformation. And uh, as you correctly said, we are very lucky and uh, to, tease, to help us fast track this technology, we have our Olympic cloud service provider Alibaba helping us. And uh, for especially also for the Olympic uh, Winter Games Beijing 2022. Thanks to Alibaba cloud technology, as you correctly said, we actually implemented OBS cloud or Olympic broadcast services cloud uh, for all of our Olympic partners. And we are able to carry out significant part of all, all of our production and the production seen worldwide in the cloud. That means that, for example, our international broadcasting centers from Rio to Tokyo was minimized by 30%. And actually, we had also less uh, broadcasters come on site because they were able to do the production from their own base, from their quarter. This makes major savings for Olympics uh, broadcasters and for the Olympic Games. So this is fantastic technology. And in addition to that, I'm sure you remember uh, in Tokyo when there was the 100 meter final, and I, I hope I pronounced his name right, Bing Tian Su uh, was also part of the uh, 100 meter final. So and we were, yeah. brought, uh, we were brought 3D uh, at least technology. Also that uh, was the first on Alibaba Cloud and with our also our other top partner Intel to be able to enhance with artificial intelligence and really see how an athlete's perform. So we are expecting to bring more innovation like that. You know, all these technology will game, make the games uh, even more fantastic to watch. Uh, Paul, what are some of the other aspects of the high-tech winter games that struck you personally? Well, we, I will be staying out of the loop, of course, the closed loop. Yeah. But we'll, we'll be worried about, a little concerned about those who will be staying inside the loop. And I understand there are some you know, temperature or, you know, uh, monitoring or even 
more advanced system to, you know, without touching the athletes and also par those participants inside the loop, uh, without touching them, and they, they have, they would build a very initial general idea of the, the body condition, the body condition, the fitness condition, and health condition. Even more advanced than that, even more sophisticated oh. than the pure temperature. And maybe with the uh, similar to privacy? PCR test. What about their privacy? Well, uh, that, that will be uh, made sure by, jointly by the IOC and the, by the IFs, the International Federations, uh, and also those delegations together with the host, the host of the cities. Okay, so Mr. Korna, um, so out of all these technologies, people are asking this question. How will, you know, um, uh, the legacy of the high-tech Olympics be defined? I mean, how can average citizens, average folks, uh, going forward, enjoy some of these uh, very cool and very exciting technologies, uh, you know, when the Winter Olympics are done. Uh, what will be your answer to that? I, I, what, what you will see and the normal people will enjoy is that we'll bring forward how games will be consumed from a digital perspective and bring this innovation will hopefully change the way that we consume it from our laptops to our mobile phones. So it will be extremely something that we will see for the years to come how Beijing really changed the way that we consume these uh, winter sports. Uh, Professor Fan, what do you think? I mean, of all the new technologies showcased uh, by these games, which ones could benefit people and uh, be applied in their daily lives uh, once the Olympics are over? Okay, there are some more examples. Uh, 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 one more example is uh, research to develop and uh, develop the technology equipment and the uh, closing of the ice and snow sports such as uh, snowmobile, skis, snow and ice machines, and the high performance winter sport crossing with the characteristics of fast uh, protection, uh, warm and the beauty. All, all these crosses will be used in the winter Olympics. So this is uh, uh, one example. Then uh, another one is uh, we study and develop some new technology on television and the media, such as the 5G broadband communication plus 8K image. Also cloud broadcasting platform, VR computation watching, the intelligent voice service, and so on. Paul, what do you hope to be some of the uh, lasting legacies of the Winter Olympics? I think we should be prepared at the Olympics are approaching us. We need to make sure that technologies will play their role, of course, but their performance, however big award they will eventually be winning, we will let the real stars, the, the major roles to play their roles in Beijing, the, the athletes, the coaches, they are the heroes and heroines in our Olympics. And at the end of it, you know, you know Beijing 2022 may be re remembered even more for the technolo technological advancements than the athletes' performance, but we need to make sure that most of the technologies will, be, will go unnoticed. And they just feel very safe and secure, and the audiences will benefit from the advancement, the conveniences of enjoying very different Winter Olympics. But at the same time, let's pray for their performance and the story to go well first. I, I agree 120%, Paul. Uh, let the games begin. And also, it's all about the athletes. Uh, thank you all so very much, Mr. Korna, Professor Pan, and Paul Doan. That's all the time we have. I want to thank our panelists once again for sharing all the unique characteristics of the spectacular event uh, we're about to see in uh, less than uh, 30 days. And I'll turn things back onto the train where my colleague Tian Wei and her guests have other exciting stuff to show us. Thank you, Wang Guan. We are en route to Zhang Jiakou. There is a lot of sceneries around us uh, along the railroad. The city of Beijing, in fact, largely surrounded by Yanshan Mountain. That is why we've been traveling in and out of tunnels one after another. This is one of the most difficult parts of building the railway here. The old railway travels about 35 kilometers per hour. Of course, now, as we said earlier, is 350 kilometers. 
and you said 360 kilometers. But anyway, so <laughs> this is a huge change, but putting that aside, I mean, just the sceneries along the railway would remind us, you know, the life in China. The three of you have been living in China for quite some time. How is it like to work in this country and also to be able to experience some of a very different culture for you, Alexander? Sure. Uh, by the way, you have uh, told about the uh, different landscape, mm -hmm. uh, but actually in China we can find and we can try much more landscapes because every different, uh, every region, any region, they are almost uh, different, all of them. Mm. Uh, that, so that's why it's really very interesting to work in China. I think that uh, one of the most memorable for me was uh, the report about the Tiananmen soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible to imagine their strength and their discipline. By the way, the strength and uh, the discipline <laughs> is the typical uh, characteristics for Chinese people. Mm. So that's why uh, it's um, such kind of China in a uh, small version. So you are trying to pick one small corner of China sure. to show the whole picture. Sure. Mm. So That's that an interesting way of doing your job. What about for you? As Alexander just mentioned, um, you've been to all corners of China, different provinces, different mm. cities, and such different stories. And I want to share with you one story about um, old uh, lady. She's more than 100 years in um, uh, Guanxi province, uh, in small county, the name is uh, Shangling. It was two years ago. When we get to her village, um, she just uh, go out, saw a lot of journalists, and her first uh, sentence was, oh, um, I, didn't, um, I didn't wear chipao. I have a very nice red chipao. Yeah. I'm, I'm not very beautiful. Just give me a second. I have to change my clothes because I want to be a beautiful lady. You know, the old nanny, what, she, she was like more than 100 years and she was so happy uh, for this life. And after I asked her, so what is the secret for a long li life? And the answer was very simple, happiness. So uh, from that time, every time when I see any problem in my life, I just think about old lady and no problems. Javier, it's interesting that our two friends, uh, they are picking one individual out of 1.4 billion to tell their stories about China. I wonder whether you have been doing stories about that or something else. China is really like a continent. And it's really amazing when you go to to Yunnan, to Sichuan, to Fujian, the different people, the different ethnics, mm -hmm. um, to Tibet, uh, the heavens of Tibet is something amazing, to Xinjiang, where you can feel this uh, beautiful Arab and Muslim culture that mm -hmm. we have in Spain too. Also in Yanan, for instance, in northern Sansi, uh, when you visit um, how was in the 30s there with the uh, revolutionaries uh, during the 30s and the 40s and you learn about the story of China also really China is, is like a world like a continent and you can never uh, stop to discover new things mm. we are passing through a lot of different uh, sceneries one of them just to tell one story about China is called Guanting Reservoir right outside the window, very pretty. Mm -hmm. It was once one of the major sources of drinking water for Beijing back in the 1950s and 60s, but later the water was so badly polluted as a result of industrialization that the government stopped piping it into households in the surrounding areas. That was from 1980s to early 2000. With a rising awareness of environment protection, water quality in the Guanting Reservoir gradually recovered and was once again sent into water pipes in cities around it. So the reservoir we just passed really shows, you know, the different development stages of China and of Beijing. That's why there is no doubt that uh, very soon it would be carbon neutrality. <laughs> yes, no, 2030 and 2060. Yeah. It's amazing in this uh, sense the, the development, the green development of, of China. No? Uh, maybe it's not so known, but China, we just saw the, the wind power uh, wheels 
And China is the first uh, in the world in wind energy, the first in solar energy with distance, is the first in electric cars. And so it's really amazing in the work of China in the last 20, 10 years in developing green energies. This is really a point. Elena, not only you're going to tell us about what you're going to do, I know you're also going to talk to your colleagues back in Dubai. Yes, yeah, sure, and I'm waiting for a, ca a contact with my colleague in Dubai through Zoom. Heidi, hello, can you hear me? Can you see us? Hello, yes, yes, I can hear you. So we are now in high-speed railway train, and uh, the name is Olympic Express uh, with my colleagues. So um, how is the weather in Dubai? Everything is good? Yeah, the weather now is wonderful in Dubai. It's winter here. Thank you for being with us. Uh, so I really want to know, back in the Arab world, are many people interested in winter sports? What are the categories from your part of the world that you are going to watch very closely for the Beijing 2022 Winter Games? Uh, thanks again for having me. I think uh, all the Arab uh, world, all of the people, Arab people here in our countries are very interested in uh, sport as all, well, especially in Winter Games. But uh, the situation is different. We don't have uh, a cold winter like Beijing or like uh, China at all. But uh, but uh, it will be an interesting game, and I think uh, a lot there is a lot of fun here who will be struggling to see the athletes there and the games. There will be certainly teams uh, coming from the Arab world participating in the Winter Games. Uh, what do you think their aspirations might be after you are doing some reports already about the games? Uh, yeah, uh, our main reports will be doing from China by Elena there and uh, other colleagues but uh, i think the game itself and the competition there in beijing uh, many people need want to see it skating skiing like that here in arab because you don't have that cold winter here you don't have such huge uh, facilities for skating for skiing you know so it's a quite new thing for us will be thank you very much hadi for being with us Bye. Bye. China is practicing in its own population a zero tolerance policy. On the other hand, this is an international sports event, so there might be a lot of different protocols as the situation evolves. So as a journalist, how adjustable you have to be and how ready you have to be about all these possibilities. Uh. If we have just two variants to follow such kind of rules or not to have the Olympic Games, <laughs> we should choose the first variant. Of course. No other variants at all. So we have to follow and uh, be because that's why it would be possible to have a, a great celebration of the sport mm. for all over the world. Mm. So as journalists, I guess you have to be ready about all possibilities sure. and work yeah. under all circumstances. We are already used to because we were working already two years in China uh, during the pandemic and we have covered Wuhan and we have covered the two sessions in China and we, we were uh, through a very compl uh, complicated uh, series of measures and we adapt. We adapt uh, along the way. Mm. You know, a lot of times, uh, chief editors back at home do not really understand the circumstances journalists are facing in different countries when they are covering the stories. And uh, during the COVID time, it is even more difficult sure. to communicate because they have never been here, at least for two years or three. So that, that's an extra layer of challenge. They to you, what is the best all. way to do it? Yeah, uh. really, they don't understand at all. They are our way of life here and our opportunities, uh, what can we do or what we can't do. Mm. So, so that's why uh, these Olympic Games is also uh, one way uh, to be uh, a little bit closer to all over the world mm. and uh, to explain Chinese experience of uh, the battle against mm. the coronavirus. Yeah, people could hardly travel to other countries now with the Omicron particularly. So what we bring to them 
will be probably one of the only source they have about the world. So there's an extra layer of responsibilities pressure, big pressure. also, big, <laughs> big pressure, pressure also. <laughs> How can we tell, just with limited time, a very balanced story to the interest of different groups? Very difficult. Well, I hope that 5G will help us. <laughs> mm, technology is my Technology, help. yeah, mm. technology. Javier, to you, how to do that? Yeah, as a journalist, you have to try always to be balanced, no? That is uh, the first uh, obligation of, of a journalist, no? And in, in this case, with China, it's very difficult to be balanced because you have a lot of pressure, f pressure from both sides and you have a lot of interest in in the information, story, and narratives. In principle, sports has nothing to do with politics and so on, and you could be balanced uh, reporting about sports. Let's see if that's true, because if we remember the, the last Summer Olympics in Japan, and uh, there were some kind of rankings of the medals and so, which were not so balanced, no, in some media. You talk about earlier the balance, but at the same time, how can we uh, collect information? Uh, how can we make sure we give more information rather than just our own commentaries is also extremely important. Uh, Alexander, with the COVID, there might be even extra layer of challenge in that regard as well. Uh, that yeah. we don't fall into our own little world, but we will be able to open our ears and open our eyes. Uh, right now we are living in such kind of uh, new reality, but uh, I think and I really hope that after the Olympic Games, the borders could be a little bit uh, not not so close as right now mm. <laughs> because it would be uh, also an experience for china to open the borders for a short time and to see what will be after that mm. a high-speed railway interlinking the 2022 Winter Olympics three competition zones, Beijing, Yanqing, and Zhangjiakou. In only 56 minutes, the Beijing to Zhangjiakou high-speed railway completes a journey of 174 kilometers, outrunning its international peers in cities like New York and London. Yet a century ago, the country was just starting to have its first domestically made railway thanks to an engineer by the name of Zhen Tianyou. In 1909, the Jingjiang Railway started operation. A century later on the same route, trains have gone from traveling at 35 kilometers an hour to 350 kilometers an hour. Dubbed the world's first smart high-speed rail, the Beijing to Zhangjiakou high-speed railway is fully covered in 5G network. Equipped with automated driving system and uses China's self-developed Beidou navigation satellite system. Taking ski trips by train is becoming in vogue, driving local economies along the way. For more than a hundred years, trains have been running between Beijing and Zhangjiakou, the very bedrock of modern China, taking its people to places in ever faster speed. I'm Tian Wei, and now you're watching the special forum on the Olympic Express, the 5G high-speed train connecting three competition zones of Beijing Winter Olympics. Join me here once again in our very special 5G studio is Alexander from Russia, Javier from Spain, and also Elena from Dubai. I, I want to thank the three of you for joining us along the trip. The Taizicheng that we're heading for is in Hebei province. It used to be quite a poor town, in fact, but with the building of Jingjinji, this whole area around Beijing and this Olympic Games to be able to enlighten that journey, to be able to bring more impetus to the cities and towns along the way of this express. We hope things will be better for the lives not only of people here, but also many of those that are traveling to this place. So, uh, as you may know, this is a very different development stage, uh, Javier, uh, of China. Uh, do you see this winter sports will also be an opportunity for China, just like 
the Summer uh, Olympic Games back in 2008? Of course, yeah, in many aspects, no? And of course, in the economic aspect, uh, could be an opportunity also to improve the, the infra infrastructure and stations for uh, winter sports in, in China, no? China has a big possibility and big potential for winter sports because it has big and um, wonderful mountains, but it has not so many and good stations, no? And maybe after the Olympics is is a good opportunity to build new and um, modern stations. And I know there are a lot of foreign companies who are willing to invest in in this kind of projects. Mm -hmm. uh, another very important thing that uh, Olympic Games uh, uh, gives. Uh, give lots of uh, opportunities and possibilities for the popularization of uh, winter sports mm. here. So you know that, for example, in Russia, after the uh, Olympic Games in Russia, there uh, it was uh, lots of lots of facilities for winter sports. As uh, right now, I can see the same situation in Beijing, because right now, uh, you know the direction of the governments, mm. 300 million people. But I'm sure that in China it would be much more than 300 million people mm. who will be mad about winter sports. Mm. It would be much more. Now you can see we're already arriving at the Taizicheng Station. It is one of the venues uh, for the 2022 winter uh, skiing games. All skiing events other than alpine skiing are scheduled to be held over here. Uh, during the Winter Olympics, in San Diego, for instance, in this station, you have a piste where you can, you can ski looking to the grid wall. This is something amazing, no? And you have the Jimin Ji post close to San Diego with the sacred mountain of Jimin, sacred beauties mountain. And so you have amazing places only here around to see how beautiful and how diverse is, is China, no? And that could be very positive also for the tourism mm, in China. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Uh, last year I was nearby Beijing in different ski resorts. And compared to this year, people this year more and more go into ski resorts. So I can say that um, winter sports becoming more and more popular in China. Mm. And it's not only about the sports, I can say it's also about style, lifestyle, when you can gather with your friends, with your family and go to ski resort, you enjoy not only sports, but enjoy the time spending. So I mm. think the Tongli and Zhang Jiako in this field, like winter sports, have to make it more and bigger, 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 mm. not only for sports, but also for um, hotel services and etc. cetera. Mm. Mm. We are heading now to the end of our destination, which is Chongli, our next stop. So I feel a lot about the trip. I already bought several postcards at the souvenir shop. In fact, I want to write to some of my best friends. I wonder whether you would also like to have this opportunity, sure. you know? Write something for your friends, and maybe we can show at the end when we are arriving at our destination. Just as you said, the Olympic Games is going to be an important occasion for the world to take a second look at China. Maybe a look that is different from their earlier knowledge about what is really going on in this country. Yeah, uh, I hope the Winter Olympics uh, can contribute uh, to show the world a uh, better image of China, a more real image of China, maybe that the image of China that they have and the usual uh, narrative of the Western media. The China way is different than the Western way. It's different because there are different ways to do things and to think and to act and mm -hmm. to govern in the world. But uh, has, it's good that it's different, uh, not everybody has to be the same. And we have to see this uh, China model of action with other, other perspective, not with all Western eyes, because they have different values and different way of feel and, and of act. So I think uh, we have to change a little bit our, our mind and our look uh, when, we, when we see what China does. No? Mm. And I hope that the games can contribute for mm. that. Time really flies when we are on a 5G express trip. So we are already arriving at Zhang Jiako Station. Our program is 
also coming to an end. While we were going through the tunnels, we all wrote our own postcard. I wrote it to my former roommate, who's now living in North Carolina in the United States. I miss her very much. I hope to send this card to her. I wonder what you wrote about. It's my card to my family uh, in Europe. Um, because they are also looking forward for Winter Olympic Games and with them good luck and good health and uh, everything uh, good in New Year. I wrote especially in Russian because uh, I have read this card for mm -hmm. my family in Russia, for my parents, because I've never met him during these two years <laughs> and I'm waiting for such a fantastic moment and I'm sure when they will watch the Olympic Games in Beijing they will be thinking about me. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I wrote this card for my daughter. I have a five-year-old daughter which is Marina Garcia and uh, casually my daughter is five, five and a half uh, years old now and he's, she spent uh, the half of her life in China and the half in the West. No? I wish her uh, that the Winter Games will contribute to make uh, her a better world to live in. Thank you so much. I guess that's all very sincere wishes coming from the bottom of our heart for our beloved ones. And also the same best wishes to our audience who are watching this very special forum on the um, Olympic Express sure. with us. So I want to thank our friends, thank you. Uh, Elena, Alexander, and uh, Javier for your best wishes. All the best to you and to your family. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. We are all looking forward to seeing them at the 2022 Beijing Winter Games. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Beijing. <laughs> <laughs>